大家好，我是来自 EDG 的浩东，我是队内的 IGL。呃，先是球球，球球就是一个比较开朗、比较活泼的一个小男孩。然后，包括他在游戏里面、比赛里面，跟他的性格一样，都是特别的活泼。Smoke 就给人一种很冷酷无情的感觉，在赛场上面，他就是那种杀手。然后康康，康康在赛在赛场里面，他就是扮演着一个活跃大家气氛的人，包括在平时的生活里面也是同样的。然后 Nobody 就是也是属于比较稳重的类型，在比赛里面也可以很信任信任他。还有 ABO， 虽然他是替补，但是他也一直是我们其中的一员吧，他的性格也不错。Hello， 大家好，我是来自 EDG 的 ZMGG KK 康康，我是队里面的狙击手。然后在打法方面上，因为我从 Chamber 变成了 Jet 嘛，可能现在打得更就是快慢自如一样的感觉，不会像以前一样像个愣头青一样永远冲出去，然后去找手杀。现在可能会做一些更团队一点的事情。现在无畏契约的大型比赛有了中国的队伍，对于我个人来说，这肯定是一个很好展现自己的机会，也会在未来更好的发挥我自己。我不知道有多少信心去面对一百 T， 但是我觉得我们能赢，我们只需要打好我们自己的东西，在场上吸取上一次世界冠军赛的经验。我想对一百 T 说的是，千万不要 pick 我，因为你会成为我民居下的亡魂。我觉得其他队伍如果低估我们的话，他们会死得很惨。Oh, I love it when a player can back up that trash talk as Kong Kong definitely did in this series so far. Welcome back, everyone. I've got Brent. Psycho and Psycho with me. I mean, I asked you guys, what are the chances of this actually happening? But Psycho, it's happening. It's <laughs> happening, and they're doing exactly what I wanted them to do. They're creating the chaos. They're controlling the tempo. That attack side was excellent from them. Yeah, I think they looked really good. But for Hundred Thieves, they are finding moments where things are falling to pieces for them. Uh, I mean, in this in this map, EDG had 14 first kills, which is a really big problem. Yeah. And I think one of the issues for me is you're not seeing that big play making from Cryo. That that was the whole reason they brought him into the team. In the series so far, Cryo is four and 12 in first kill to first death, and it's not because he's a bad player. It's because Hundred Thieves are not morphing their style to set him up. They're still playing around Stella and still playing around Bang. It, it's so different. Do you know who's a good player though? Choo Choo. Are we on the train? <laughs> are we on the train? <laughs> Is it going? Yeah, I'm, I'm the feeling it, honestly. Train? These guys are, it's like you said, Don, I, I, honestly, that just they're being able to create the chaos and set the tempo that they're playing at. And you're seeing that manifest in plays that Choo Choo is just playing across the board. I mean, this guy is just taking matters into his own hands sometimes with some of these plays that he's making. We saw at the beginning, we kind of highlighted the guy as well over just the kind of like the tempo shift, I suppose, or the timeout that they took when we were looking at that, that first half. But this guy has just been taking matters into his own hands with plays like this. Like, this this is just absurd. Asuna doesn't even suspect him of running across the point in this, in this particular Yeah, that's so weird. Because it's such a strange play, but this is what you could, this is what you got to expect. And it's one of the hardest elements of playing as a team, like Edward Gaming, is because how do you prep against this Chinese Valorant, man? How do you prep against this? Because they are just so willing to make sometimes the non-percentage play that works out <laughs> because they have utmost confidence in their own individual skills. It's something that you can't really plan for, you can't attest for. And it's like we were talking about that, the, the kind of match in terms of Stella as an IGL and how he was really going to be playing and being tested. There's never been a test like this, man. How yeah. do you prepare for this as a young IGL coming into this without that much experience? Experience, it's so hard, and you're just seeing it manifest in that map with Edward Gaming taking it. Uh, and this looks like a really even series. Both teams coming out with good ideas on their map and taking it away. Pearl, as a decider, I've only seen great stuff from 100 Thieves. So I don't think the, the America's fans should be all doom and gloom just yet. 100 Thieves are probably still favored, but from what we've seen on EDG, they can cause problems. And if they've got a good idea on Pearl, this could absolutely go all the way. I mean, we talk about how EDG can win this, but Don, how can 100 Thieves win this now? Well. I really would love to see 100 Thieves lean into supporting Cryo on the Operator. You know, that's something yeah. they haven't been doing the past few maps. I'd love to see it here, but historically, 100 Thieves have liked comps that include Viper, that include Sage, 
And I think that Cryo may have to flex around to accommodate that kind of composition if that's the game plan that Mike's wants to maintain here. Well, let's see what they're going to pick here in the Prime Gaming Agent Select. They normally go with really heavy retake comps, and that's the same strategy they came into Icebox with. So maybe Cryo's going to take the back seat again, and they're going to go for a really heavy retake comp. Yeah, and I think that could be a mistake, honestly, as well, because, Don, you mentioned, you know, trying to enable Cryo with the operator, and someone who is definitely going to be operating as much as humanly possible is Kan Kan, and this guy is now moving over to the jet. Oh, there it is! Fight, oh, but we there are going to get that there jet head-to-head -head battle between them, and so, so much, I think, is going to be just pivoting off the back of this. Absolutely, and we've been waiting for this all series, at least I have. Kong Kong has just done such a good job of showing that Jet is still viable, the Operator is still viable in this new meta, and I'm excited to see what Cryo matches against that firepower. Well, finally, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Map 3 and also Cryo finally bringing out the Jet. Uh, Dog and Bala, I know you're definitely excited about this one. I'm chomping at the bit, baby. It doesn't get any better. You've got Cryo on the jet. You have one map to decide who goes home between these two teams. What more could you ask for? Yeah, this is crazy. This is still the first round for these guys. So no matter what happens, we get to see one of these teams again. And I couldn't be more excited because they both showed such good resilience so far throughout the series. I mean, Cryo on the jet, I think we're seeing exactly what the desk has been asking for all series long. Support this guy on the jet. Get him on up and try to get aggressive with him. Try to get him into lanes where he could really cause damage. And right off rip, guys, five people from 100 Thieves looking to go down B-Long. Four from Edward Gaming. Vintage EDG aggression and whimsy, but it's this is ratty, bro. There are two hiding behind the pillar. You have one in Cubby. What is this? Now they go. Oh, and they're able to hold him back. But they're what? trading back and forth. This Kong kind of gets two. Are they able to get out? Are both of them able to get out safely? Yes, the knife suppresses them, and they don't want to follow. Somehow, some way, they just traded evenly. After it looked like all that utility that Edward that Edward threw, and the first two kills going in favor of 100 Thieves, and Kong Kong got dinked too. And, it, and again, Ball, it's the heroics, the individual heroics that we've seen out of EDG, yeah. right? Like. It's those moments where it seems like 100 Thieves have a massive lead and they've got numbers and they have positioning and then just out of nowhere, yeah. you've got things like Kong Kong with that 2K. Yeah. But they made the right choice. They walk back towards B. Avoid the knife timing too, so nobody all on himself. And he doesn't really have an escape route, but I love this angle. Oh, they spotted him. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. What? And they're so far away now, but they don't know that. 100 Thieves have to plant safe. And they won't be able to play the long plant. Kong Kong's still alive right now. They lined up. That could have been bad. Yeah, that could have been disastrous. But it's still Chi Chu, the train that keeps on giving. Light armor, free gun, a dink on the bang. He's so weak. It's just like tempting fate. It's a game of chicken. Do you swing? Do you push them? Oh, oh they do! Chichu again! And he blows them a kiss. Goodbye on the pistol. He has been clutching over and over. He's a monster unleashed. I got to see that again because, I mean, there was chaos at the beginning of the round, but, you know, it really felt like 100 Thieves, they play that as well as you can. I mean... Chichu also played that phenomenal lead too though. Both players low, so they don't want to take a heads up fight. They don't want to be swinging against a classic. One swing and, short, one swing wide. He gets all the way left and waits. Waits because they're trying to hold, make sure he doesn't walk into them. And yeah. at that point, once the timing elapses, they think he could go back, back call. So that's why they start pushing him. Yep. And he gets the peeker's advantage. It's a force by here for 100 Thieves again. Remember they got the spike down. They're going for it, just like they did on Lotus. Four singers and a specter in the hands of Cryo. Again, on the jet. It's early, there's a lot of anticipation, a lot of conversation about how he'll be able to perform in this role. We're gonna get to find out very quickly. As that it seems like not great. Nope, they try to take art. They succeed. Ooh, the decay is going to be really good here for nobody. It's perfect, and he gets away back in the A main as well. Whoa, oh, but he pushes. He doesn't wait for his team. He goes in aggressively. He takes one down with him. And you've got Haodong waiting for them to swing through. Stellar Stinger cleans him up. 2v2, Stellar's got to be careful here. They're going to push him. He 
was waiting oh, for it. It was a dink. Crowd gets across the path, though. It's clearly seen. It's Chuchu again. The swoop. Cryo not tempting fate, not giving him the fight. Chichu wins it out. That's two clutches in a row for the guy. And we already saw two major rounds from him last game off the top of the dome, but clearly having impact so often. And right away, they did get the spike down. But two clutches back to back like that, I start to think Edward Gaming wants to completely run away with this game. And 100 Thieves need to find solutions, their players. Right now, the decisions, for example, Stellar walking back into Art when the double push is coming up. That one hurts. I think it's some of the decisions like like you're alluding to on the side of 100 Thieves, but also EDG just playing in a way I that mean, you wouldn't necessarily expect, the right? Like The decisions from them to push into that orb. Yeah, exactly. Nobody, that was, I mean, phenomenal by himself flashing back through that too. It's just ridiculous. Some more aggression here in the shops. That suppress finds bang. See the flash out, you hear the blade storm online for Cryo. What value can he find with it? And Chichu's just jump spotting, gonna put up the wall too. Cryo can't explode over top of it, but Kong Kong's here. <laughs> to support all the spam, I mean, this guy is six cents sometimes. They drop the wall for Kong Kong to peek, and he takes everybody down, except for Asuna in front of him. You're gonna have to do so much work with these sheriffs. You don't have the blade storm anymore. The thing is, they've gotten some space across the middle of the map. Yeah, I mean a lot of space. Oh, but what do you do with it here, right? Like, look at Smoggy. I mean, he's just literally watching it. You can have the space. We're comfortable against just your sheriffs, sure. And also, we have two stars here for Bang. You have to use them on the cross. But I can also counterplay. I love this. Putting up the wall to Molly as well for Chichu. And there is no smoke covering out on. And now the bang is done. There's not going to be much more. The Guardian for Haodong cleans up the round. EDG up 3 0. There's just no way to clear that back. No. Crossfire. That's so tough because the only real bit of utility they had was the fault line. And they used that to get out onto B to begin with. Yeah. Man, they're fired up. I want one of, I want some of those thunder yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Right? Everybody's got him. Kong Kong's with the op. And, I mean, everything has been pointing towards him. Being the guy who's getting all the support from his team every time he's taking the initiative, every time he's being proactive. Stellar's one away from this ult. He's going to grab it right now. They just droned out mid as well. It's not going to be a quick flank here. I think also Stell is calling for Derek right now to go on that lurk through art. You saw the pings on the map. Oh, the thing is that lockdown is going to push Konkan out into an angle where Derek may get caught. I mean, this KJ ult's going to go off, but they're right back into it. The flash as well, really high, is keeping them out from hitting the site. Really nice timing out from Derek here. The flash in his face, Cryo gets a kill onto nobody. Bladeswarm still in the hands of Kong Khan. Spots two targets, lands one, and that's all it is. They've managed to establish a control. They have our control as well. And yeah, the spike's not down yet, but that seems like a foregone conclusion. That seems inevitable. Thing here is Chichu does have his pit. And it's early. He could invest it. Oh, that kill certainly would have been it. Huge kill out from Smoggy though with the Spectre. A 1v2, he's weak, he has no armor. Position not necessarily betrayed yet, but all he has is five bullets in the clip. Time not on his side either. The shock dart doesn't deal any damage. Smoggy taking some of that space. You imagine here, it's just enough to buy some time, try to keep him around. But 100 Thieves finally on the board. Yeah, I think that one, EDG has the idea to try to retake fast as the lockdown goes off with a flash really, really high. But the timing's slightly off. How long smoke doesn't fade for like four seconds after they're still pushing in. So no, that flash is not getting them while they're in there and while they're flashing out themselves. And so players fall on the site. Derek's flank is not even relevant in that round. And finally we have it. Cryo on the op, on the jet. 
And it's funny to say this, but first time we have him opping on Jet in this series, even though we played Icebox. That was on everyone's bingo card, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you just joined us, he played Omen on Icebox. 100 Thieves took that map, but didn't have the same expectation. Con, con. Just a shorty. Oh, but the shorty's plenty. Oof. Fan gets a kill, but he's got 30 HP left. I'm surprised Concon didn't get that kill. Normally he's firing those two bullets instantly. Yeah. It looked close. Now remember here, you talked about Cryo with the op on Jet. He's been so patient here. He and Asuna haven't moved from B Long this entire time. Chichu and Haodong have been a problem here when they hit the B site. Look how cautious they're being. They have to get in position to pop the mollies down. Asuna does have Breach Ult as well, but this Cosmic Divide is going to fall before the fight can go completely down, I think. Ah, the timing's going to be close. you got to be careful. Oh, there was no one waiting on the other side. Bang takes some space, and Chichu trades him right back. Oh, they might be able to get half before this wall even elapses right now, and Chichu has the ult, too. He has ult, and he picked up a Phantom but off look, of that kill. Breach Ult, though. That can counter that instantly, so... Well, that'll counter it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Chichu falls. Haodong's still playing back sight. Rolling Thunder invested, and they're waiting for just the last few peaks. Clean shots off from Smoggy, but there you go. You see, once again, Cry with the op. That's why people have been waiting. That's why people have been excited for it. It wasn't anti-eco, though, and we did have some investment here. Two ults used from 100 Thieves. It's definitely... You can tell. 100 Thieves is respecting these rounds no matter what happens. Obviously, Chichu there. My fear, he got that Phantom, he gets that pit down, and everything is different. But with the Breach ult, too, Asuna nullifies it. I thought for a second there, Chichu might have actually popped his ult before he went down, but no. Still got it. So Cryo still has the op. Kon, Kon has a op of his own now. They've switched up the setup much yeah. more like what we saw on Pistol, with a bigger spread. Because Chichu wants to ult here on A. And Kong Kong's just left to ult, or to op all the way down B-Long. And with this ult, we might actually run into a situation where Cryo goes head to head with Kong Kong on the ops late in the round. For now though, it looks like a B-Leak clear is on the cards. Derek has his drone. Kon Kon just gave up that aggressive angle, took a slight step back. 100 Thieves using the drone that you just mentioned, clearing out mid. Yeah, and that's making noise. They know what's going on right now. Asuna just sent a floss through sewers. Uh oh. Kon Kon's. A lot of space. Yep. Kon Kon wants to peek this. Yep, he's got the op, and he's right there waiting to receive. Two members right in front of him, and the flick is clean. And Cryo's not taking any more space, so any threat that was there of getting a pick inside a sewer is gone. Let's them buy. Oh, one thing worth noting here is uh, Cryo did get tagged. So they have a decent idea of where the rest of the members are. Cryo's just still holding this right now. It's stun, he dodges it. Head to head. Cryo's going through the smoke. He picked up a phantom. Yeah, off in the hands of Asuna now. Kankan just a man oh my goodness. by himself. There it is. Keeping things back. And Asuna's the one who lands a shot. What? A second one out from Asuna. I'm not going to lie, I think that might have been a no-scope. We'll have to see that one again. For all of the anticipation of Cryo at the op, it's Asuna who gets two clean ones. He's gone now. Cryo up close. Yes. Avoids the nightfall though, but no pings except for back call, so very much aware that he could be in there. Or maybe not, Chichu just cleared back call without his hey, back turned to it. Oh, they have an idea now. Timing here for Cryo is everything. Oh, the wall keeps him safe. What? No way. Stellar, huge. Having to do it out on his own. Chichu again in a heroic spot for EDG. Can he save the day once again? The timing is there, and oh my gosh. Chichu once more. No way. <laughs> no way, man. Cryo thunderfooting his way around the angle. And Chichu glad to step off, get the kill, and get the defuse.
third clutch. Now in the bag for Chu Chu. In the first half. Players in the first standing. half. One enemy remaining. In the first six rounds. Dude. I mean, he's 50% of the time clutching the round. That is just ridiculous. He had one bullet left. <laughs> one bullet left. <laughs> I feel like we need a clutch counter for Chi Chu. Back in the game here. Kong Kong on the angle, tries to take it towards Cryo. No op for him this time. That might be the first opening miss he's had this map. Very well could be. And he's dynamic with it too. I mean, it's so nice to watch. No matter if his crosshair placement is not perfect for the first shot, he'll go for those jump peaks. He'll find people on ramps. He'll find just heads. Pixels. And it seems reckless, but if it works, then I guess sure, right? I mean, it's, it's not reckless. He's playing jet. The guy could just escape. You just dash away. I mean, compare that to how Cryo, I mean, he's attack hopping. It's much different, but like in that last round, trying to clear into sewers. Just really not taking the initiative at all. Look at this, Bang has gotten all the way up in sewers. This is really nice. Really aggressive here, and nobody just pop flashing through his smoke, cleans up Cryo. I mean, I'm really now. But Bang's deep in the line, though. Yeah, he is, and oh, he They're looking for him. Look, nobody is literally walking in. And now he's been clear, but with the information that he got close sewers, he thinks it's gone. Bang, definitely a threat still for the two players on this site. He's got to go be fast here because surely he's expecting more pressure from behind him. He's got to take this space. He's got to clear out the fights in front of him. Chichu pre-firing the angle, expecting the push in from Bang. Reads it like a book. Austin with two massive Singer here, here though. They've got the Rolling Thunder to push them back. That should create enough space for the spike to go down. They don't have space on site right now. Thankfully, no utility on the character still alive here. Austin very quickly managing to upgrade a the weapon as well. all the way through. Wait. How has he gotten this far? They've got him pinched. The spam is there. How on earth? ADG looks so clean in these rounds. They look so good. They are frying. And he's running all the way back up as well in the spawn. Smoggy to get the op. Five to two. Huge lead. And I'm thinking back to the, the stats that Josh kept re referencing on the desk. Oh, don't hit him with the stats. I don't have them on me, but the, the first kills, the duels and engagements going on in those first two maps for Cryo. Obviously, he was not playing exactly this role, but it's the same result. He's definitely going negative in this against Kong Kong. And still not an op kill, it feels like. Oh, I don't think he has one, no. He's really only had the op maybe twice, I think, and it was Asuna who found success with it previously. So you very well may be right. Either way, the situation dire. Again, this is map three. This is elimination for one of these two teams. And as we mentioned before, this is surely not the position I think anyone expected. This is where we see the, the the leadership from Stellar. I know we've talked about him a lot mm -hmm. because he's been he's been a fragger. He's been a, an individual performer in the server for his team. Now yep. they need him to be the leader and the voice of reason in moments such as these. And you could see on Lotus, a lot of the times that there was good reads and good plays, it was because Stellar put himself into positions to either get the info or to make the lurk happen, right? And on this map, you see it's kind of disjointed bang is the guy going up in there i yeah. want that to happen i really do want bang to be in that position and not necessarily stellar but i feel like you're lacking on the same timing calls Get out of my way. in those positions oh no he's already just no he's just waiting for it bro that's so cool too because we've seen so many picks from that position hunter's fury blade storms used con con responding in kind with what cryos offered this is pacey here for 100 Thieves. Yeah, it is. They want to go fast. I think it KO ulted, though. And can you get through any smokes here? Nobody again just finds a kill. He's got a frenzy. He's got a frenzy. Chi Chu just on the other side of the smoke. He's so weak. Oh my gosh, he oh did. My oh, he did. Cryo saved the day. He looked away. I think Bang didn't even see him. I don't think so. I can't use that. But they're not in the site, Doug. They're still not in the site. They're investing a lockdown here. And I think with the gun that Bang retrieved, 
Yes, there's a chance. So let's see if they go for the same sort of fast flash repush. What? They haven't, they didn't really take space until lockdown was already through. And that's gonna allow Khan Khan to go aggressive. Oh. He's able to take his space right back. It's now 2v2. Cryo still has blades. Spike managed to go down, but just by the thinnest of margins. Phantom in the hands of nobody. He still has a flash to work with, too. Oh, Cryo's been here so for good. so long. Oh, gosh. Oh, dear. Look away. He had the positioning. He had the play. I mean, did he have the positioning, though, on he, top of that box? But he didn't know he was there. He didn't look at him. It's so tough to hit that angle with knife yeah, when yeah. you're underneath. He gets flashed off as well. I feel like you need to be. There's something missing in these post points right now for 100 Thieves. And any time they're getting in these situations, the clutches that Chichu is consistently winning, that EDG is consistently going 2v3 against them. It's the proactivity to find the information about what's happening. Yeah. Right? So where's the jump spots? Are they pushing me? Can I fall back? Do I have time for that? Those sorts of things are missing right now for 100 Thieves. And I think the, that's not normal. Knife tagging Cryo. I believe he was the only one revealed by it. And, and they're certainly not being quiet about where their position is right now. They've used a drone, jumping through, trying to take some space art. He got Asuna, who still has his fault line, too. Oh, nobody. Risky there. I guess with the smoke, he's happy to jump in and rotate back on the site, make sure that Haodong's not left all alone. What a brutal one way to have to work right through. Well, they got the tools for it. Flash, stun, and drone already spent. Dart, potentially, from Derek as well. And there it is. It does land in there. Crowd dashes on. Smoggy just leaves it again. And I mean, they already got a lot of art control earlier on, so this space doesn't really gain them much with 40 seconds left. It's gonna be an A split. And it's gonna be another opening kill for EDG. But there's also no smokes on this hit anymore. Bang is gone. 30 seconds left. Nobody gonna be the first line to defense. Turns a flash, turns right back and takes care of Asuna. You got Smoggy helping out from just around the corner too. The spike trying to go down and does. Numbers still heavily in favor of EDG, and it doesn't seem like it's going to be getting better for 100 Thieves anytime soon. And the planter there just got pulled and executed from Haodong. Seller against the knob, he has to hold on. Cryo can't really hold the line for him. No. He's letting him cross. That was getting pinched. Oh, but he makes it work. Oh, he goes for a second. He is able to get two, but ultimately falls. Doug, they're crumbling. Yes, they are. They're crumbling. It's not in a disastrous way, but little things here and there. Bang getting picked early there. They still get on the site, don't get me wrong, but there's easy picks. Once, once the plant is going down, they're fighting for free. Just casually, look at that pull. Not only did the planter get seized earlier on in that, but then he gets pulled. There's so much harassment going on too. It's starting to feel very, very disjointed for 100 Thieves. I mean, on the execute there, normally it's kind of crisp. Normally there's things going together with him. Here, the aftershock's going back site. The flash is not really flashing anybody in. And on Lotus, it was 14 first kills for EDG. <laughs> it's looking like even worse of a margin here. Yeah, absolutely. This feels very, I mean, this is the same hit that we saw in the previous round, the fault line and then the flash to take space to put Pryo in a position to there get a kill. Go. This time he gets it. Okay, but five HP and this is the first time that Smoggy's actually committed to holding into sewers. And I think this one, because it comes a little faster, remember it was 40 seconds left in the round when they got success in sewers last time. And that's where a defensive saw, oh, they're re-peaking. Nice that shot from there. clean, yeah. You want to fight it. The wall out too, Chichu counter ulting. You have to deal with this, and they do. A lockdown in. Cryo still cooking across the middle of the map. No way he pushes me, does he? <laughs> no, I don't think so. He's got a pocket back here. Aftershark's oh. gonna clear, and the bang is already through the link. I mean, that's well done there. There you go. The thieves, yeah. That's what we needed to see. Very clean executing. Cryo's gonna find the... 
Finishing touches? No? <laughs> Surely Khan Khan doesn't save the op here. Imagine he, I mean. Oh, <laughs> well, they know where he is now. But do you hunt him? Looking at the money right now, it's not amazing for 100 Thieves, but there's also very little rounds left, and the money for EDG is not great either. Yeah. I think you go for it. Concurrent's been such a problem with the op. You're going to deny the op in the next round, but now that he's found some space, it's it's too much of a risk. Maybe if Cryo doesn't go down and he's just walking around on A main, maybe you can go for it. Thrifty. A thrifty round win for 100 Thieves, and <laughs> crazy to think that after everything that we've oh seen. Oh my god. <laughs> after everything that we've seen, there's still the possibility of a 7 5. <laughs> It's possible, but yep. I mean, you need another gear from 100 Thieves here. Yeah. It's an eco, actually, for Edward Gaming. It's an eco. Uh, it's very possible, actually. Two rounds left. Eco here. Con Con can still be a problem. We might even be able to say, if they don't win these two, then it's a done deal. Because they should be winning. They've gotten thrifty twice so far in the series, yep. I believe. What do they do here again? A little bit of space garnered. Concon with the op. Shot goes a bit wide, but now they know where he is. There's that caution I was wanting from Cryo as well. I'm actually trying to feel out where the angle is, feel out where the op is. The thing is, oh, I, I, I thought nobody was going to hit the second shot, bro. Very close, but Cryo taking some space. He's got the dash procced. And he's pushing his way forward. Stellar waiting back. A bit more pace, a bit more urgency behind this approach from Cryo. Spamming through, Smoggy staying alive. I don't know that they have fully confirmed that he's there. I don't think they have. I think they know based on the utility used earlier. Oh, and the spam now confirming things. Kongon still getting an op kill. On to Asuna. There it is, cleared out. You mentioned the eco. For EDG, and while the round isn't over, it doesn't look great. Cry's going left. for this. Pick off a Stellar, maybe? Yeah, this is clean. Very nice. Last We're going to full distance on this half. Every map has been close. This one looked like EDG was ready to run away with it. That but it's, it's crazy how it could still be so close, even though it looked so far out of reach. Two huge rounds out for them to, to salvage the half. Briar coming alive is huge. I mean, we can't understate enough the impact that everybody expected this guy to have and how much of a landimal he was last year throughout champions. Here's an updraft. Oh, actually got caught by that knife. Not that it matters. He could have caught Kong Kong because he is on the angle, but it's not quite deep enough. And knowing Kong Kong, he was probably pre-aiming it anyways. <laughs> it looks like, again, we're going to see some of this mid-control from 100 Thieves. Perhaps into Link, as we've seen before. The interesting thing is, I mean, EDG have kind of been comfortable giving up some of that space, to be honest. They'd rather play their lives with the exception of the one round where Smoggy challenged. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be a lot of the same. The drone through, and this time the Nightfall is a response. It's so nice to re-clear all this. The one way just goes back up. And this time, 100 Thieves wanted to push down B-Link instead of pushing into Sewers, which is great mix-up. But that actually caused them to walk right into that trap. They didn't continue to keep the space. Here's an ult fired off from Derek. They've used... <laughs> the null command, and again, Kong Kong gets another one with the op. Stellar down, the second one so close, and of course he's going to re-challenge because it's Kong Kong, why not? <laughs> he's so much fun to watch, man. Oh! And he's got him trapped! The blades let him down as Cryo gets the second. It's going to be a 2v1. Haodong by himself, the Rolling Thunder invested. A 3v1, excuse me. Oh, it's getting considerably worse. For the leader for EDG. Flash in his face, tries to turn it, no real pressure yet. 
They're just waiting for him to tap, and then they can pounce. There it is. You start to see the utility come through. Cryo's going to be the sacrificial lamb to check it. And he's the one who gets the kill. Again, for as dominant as EDG looked in the first half, for us to get to 7-5 feels like a small miracle. Yeah, that was beautiful from Cryo. He was even pulled in that situation where Kong Kong dashed on him. And that was a guaranteed stun, so good on him to just jump in that smoke. Again, a 7-5 lead for EDG. Take a look at that one more time because Con Con has just been he's he's a psychopath. Been, <laughs> he's dude, a psychopath. He's just I just automatic. love the pull though. That's so beautiful. He could easily have taken and switched this round up. Yeah, hundred percent. But either way, they hang on to an arrow lead, a lead nonetheless. Seven five in favor of EDG. One half to determine who goes home and who advances. Into you, take it away. Thank you very much, Dark and Bala. This is a lifeline. I feel like it was all over for 100 Thieves in the beginning, but Brent, they do have a chance to get back into this. Yeah, I think they've made this a much more respectable half with the 7-5, but holy mother of God. I mean, Chi Chu just absolutely, <laughs> I don't know, just channeling an entire country behind him with some of these plays. <laughs> this guy was popping off with the clutches. It is so difficult to play against a player that's pulling out stuff like this. It's just the, the Midas touch. Uh, look at this pistol round, okay? So there's some, you know, it gets down to this situation where he's in the 1v2. That, that, that is just unwinnable. Uh, well, the 1v2, and then Shishu also wins the second round when 100 Thieves force into it. Just going crazy, and then he wins round six yeah, that was, that was as one. well this, this in one. an insane clutch. This one's ridiculous as well. Knives out, gets under the fuse, hears him being pushed as well, gets oh. the gun back out, takes the fight, and just has, I think it was like 0. 0.62, just I think with the timing. Midas touch. Shishu is out here, just everything turns to gold when he when he looks at it. It's absurd. He's just having an absolutely great run this game. I mean, he's, he's swapping flawlessly, seamlessly between creating chaos and swapping immediately back to maintaining discipline and just keeping them on their toes. They don't know what to expect from him, and he keeps repeatedly catching them off guard. I will be scared if I have to play against Chichu right now, I'm not gonna lie, but you guys touched a little bit on Cryo before we headed into this uh, map. Finally, uh, Don, we got to see that jet. Finally, we got to see that jet off as well. What did you make of his half? Oh, I love seeing it, but I, I, I think that his impact so far on the attack side is, is not going to be uh, nearly what we're going to see on the defense half. I think that Cryo's uh, jet off on the defense is really what's going to push 100 Thieves over the edge if they want to win this map. Yeah, I think that's what we've seen so far from Pearl being played, honestly. That defense side so much more favorable to those jet players. I cannot believe I'm about to say this, but if 100 Thieves, they don't bring it back, they're going to get eliminated first round. I can't believe this, uh, Doug and Bala. Let's jump back in and see if they can do it. Sue, I'm not gonna lie to you. I can't believe it. I, blah, I can't believe it either. That's how. That's how <laughs> tongue-tied I am. Again, EDG with a cozy lead here. But I, I think I think Psycho's onto something here, right? Like Cryo, he's he's played well. 17 and eight, nothing to scoff at. Mm. He's gonna be on the defensive side now, and that should be a bit more comfortable, as Bren was saying as well. Yeah, as well with Asna giving him opportunities to get up into space. We still haven't really seen that support going for him. But on the other side, guys, the, the players on Edward Gaming right now are, are firing on all cylinders. Every single player. Chichu in particular. But Kang Kang too. They look so good and so hard to deal with. If they can keep things like they did on Lotus, very chaotic in these executes and find the right places to get up close. 100 Thieves was struggling to deal with that. This is the first time they're coming in with a lead at the half. It's really interesting how they were grouped up mid. It seemed like they were almost certain that that's where EDG wanted to go, and they did take some of that mid space through art, but they've gotten on to A. You've got Cryo and Kankan -Kan just to Cloudburst, keeping them apart for now. And he had no idea. Ooh. Clean response out from Derek, though. They're still pretty healthy here. They've managed to take the site back rather quickly. Chi Chu doesn't have any post plant. Smoke on the spike now. Smoggy's got to go big here. Oh, the timing just not on their side as they try to push forward. They try to take the fight, and that's exactly what they do. Asuna jumping through the smoke with the classics, going to secure the pistol for 100 Thieves. Good recognition there that he's running out of ammo. They had to be spamming the spike. They didn't really have the info, even though it was just a tap. And we trade pistols again. I mean, these, these teams are evenly matched on, all, on so many different levels. Shocking to say, yeah. coming into this tournament. Down. But once again, I mean, One enemy remaining. 
Just underrated. A team with little information on them as well. Right now, they're trying to hold on to the lead, but they're also in spitting distance of sending 100 Thieves home and advancing themselves to the next round, which would just be insane. Still have a little while before we try to think through the repercussions of that. For now, you've got Haudog playing in the smoke. Perhaps bit off a bit more than he wanted. And the thing is here, they scooped up the spike. They're going to go back mid. But Kon Kon again is taking some of this space. Already loving the approach here from 100 Thieves. They're just walking around, re-clearing things with Asuna, flashing. And they're playing passive in a lot of different space. Stellar set up. Yes, this flank is coming through. Oh, and it might actually be a pinch on the Stellar. He's up in heaven. Oh, my goodness. How have they done that? Kon Kon looks surrounded, but he's the one who gets a kill. And now it's Stellar who's trapped. But he's slipped the net. He's gotten past them. He's gotten back towards safety. Nobody looking to get the spike down. Delays for just a moment. Has to reposition. Out fast. The knife very Kong close. Kong. He forget about the spike. They just want to take the fight. Asuna with two big kills with the Bulldog. Now the spike out of no man's land. Well out of the reach of the remaining members of EDG. And then Chi Chi with four HP. Not able to get anything going. Ball, <laughs> we're tied. Yeah, but that was not a force from EDG. That was just classics. And they still somehow found a way to almost win the round. And it's interesting too because uh, again I was I was just saying how I enjoyed the approach to that first round or that second round from 100 Thieves. The way they're playing passive with Derek. Derek was watching the sewers moments before Kon Kon finds the timing on him. But also when he's rotating, he doesn't need to be looking anywhere else. That's a big blunder from Derek. And letting him into easily having the advantage in this anti-bonus. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look great. Two pistols, a marshal. Certainly less than they would have liked to bring into this round. Cryo, he had the dash proc, but the timing on the peak from Smog is just too clean. And this is where that approach starts to fail. When you start losing players instantly, it's really hard to continue the approach, right? Clearing space and playing passive you're going to leave gaps now. EDG just has to find them. They're going towards Bang right now, and that's the only player with the rifle. So potentially the wrong choice. But so much utility being thrown at him could be really difficult for him to deal with. And Asuna is in position to actually use a fault line and could pair it up with that grab well, too. So clean. I mean, even Kankan -Kan just being just outside of the bit of utility invested. Gets out onto the site. Chichu <laughs> with the molly at his feet still cleans up Stellar. Spike now down and remaining members of 100 Thieves. Again, they don't have much as far as guns. Bang and Asuna, the two who were initially supposed to respond, the first two who should have taken contact, still alive. Mm. One more kill here and he has Astral Wall. Oh, he has oh. Astral Wall now. Trying to find a good gap. Yes, this is yeah. a really good gap behind this. Chichu trying to spam through it. There's the pull, though. It's going to bring the defuser off inside the wall. They still have some time, but it's not much. Bang's heroics are going to have to be outrageous. He's gotten one. That's all it's going to be. But boy, was that close. EDG take the lead right back. Interesting choice of wall from Bang there. To be flushed with the spike rather than just walling off art. Here you were waiting for Asuna. He used this aftershock to clear the back of sight there and waiting for Bang to swing him. It took a long time and Bang took a lot of damage there. That yeah, might have did. made the difference in his clutch attempt. Yep. It was just a classic on the other side, yeah. Cryo's got the op here. Down B long, we haven't even seen EDG like be interested in B long at all no, at the beginning of the rounds. It's been all up the gut, man. It's been all up the middle. He's rotating. I think right now they're pinging over towards B. I'm wondering if EDG has some sort of inkling about where the op could be and ch charging Chi Chu to try to figure it out. Another hit up the middle in this 1-3-1 setup. 
Chichu's Chichu, Chichu shoulder there should confirm that the op isn't there. Exactly, and that's where the pivot is coming. He just jiggle peeked down B-Long, and that's the call. Yep. EDG members are rotating back. There's the drone. But it's only one, and it's only the Viper. Nobody from Hunter Thieves is moving, moving an inch. And I'm sorry, but there's not much retake utility here really posed for them. So if Derek gives up a B-Long plant, this round could be done for it. I mean, they're starting to rotate now, but it may be too late. It's really just Asuna has come over now. He is one point away from having the Rolling Thunder, so a kill here makes a big difference. But again, on B-Long, when you've got so much space that you can deal with. Oh, good. Utility there, Shock paired with the Aftershock, trying to get the plant not down. 20 seconds right now. They're delaying it until everybody's here. Haodong trying to get around him. It's not planned for B-Long, so Derek's big success here. Huge killer from Asuna, there and there's the Rolling Thunder that we mentioned. Do they take space with no? Kankon wasn't hit by it! He was backside, avoids the ult, stays alive, and he's still backside. Oh! Tiny mistakes like that. I mean, if you can even call it, that makes all the difference. And it's Cryo walking in with his back turn there. Nobody interested. And looking at the space that wasn't hit by the breach ult. Or maybe it was cleared by just the timing. That is the closest of margins, too. I mean, he gets the opening kill, and it's Cryo of all people, right? The tip of the spear for this 100 Thieves side, and then there's just nothing else to clear. If he stays back there, he gets another kill. Finds so much value out of avoiding that ult. It's huge. Down to pistols for 100 Thieves here, and they, they've been on the back foot all game now. They've got to find a magical round. EDG on the verge of 10. so slow, so cautiously, trying to feel out exactly what's happening. And there's a big trap play set up actually towards A main here. Austin's gonna trigger it probably off that hunt. That's been sitting there for a little while too. But again, Bala, I wanna go back to what you mentioned before. It's not like there have been many hits on the extremities. They haven't really fought for A main at all. Okay, ulting on the site right now, bring down any utility that could be there. KJ, stuff, whatever. Sure. And usually these flanks to A main, especially once they start only advancing, once the hit on B happens, they come way too late. But let's see what they can do. Not, not a ton. Yeah, they took down Smoggy, but Chichu's gonna continue to farm. He's got the Viper's Pit to work with now. Yeah, pretty much nothing. I mean, you need a smoke here to try to even pressure this fight. Austin's fault line is way too late from coming back. I mean, they just, they can play this so beautifully, EDG can. They have the weapons, they play off distance. And there's just not a whole lot they can do. Chishu gets four in the round. Again, he already had the Viper's Pit, so he's gonna be able to carry it into this next round. A three round lead, and it's getting late. Three round lead. Three rounds to go for EDG. Final time out here for 100 Thieves being called. They've got to discuss it all. How to make it through six rounds, potentially. It's been painful for them so far in this map. EDG's been in the driving seat for creativity, for setups that are really working. Individual performances. Individual performances. Yeah, they've had it all. I'm looking right now, too, at the just the scoreboard right now. For Cryo, 17 and 13, we've barely entered this half too much. I mean, we were six rounds in actually, and it hasn't really had that impact that we were looking for at the halftime desk, where we're looking for defensive op being really, really much more valuable. Was Didn't he have 17 kills at half? I think he might have, yeah. yeah. It's either one kill or zero kills. For him to be what people expected to be the win condition on the defensive side, that's very lackluster. Yeah, and it's interesting too, because I think the tail end, when he started to, to cook it up on attack side, he was dashing in using the Vandal, really being a part of the hit rather than being the passive element that he's been. But when he has had this op, remember, it's just gone B-Long, and he hasn't found them. You can't catch 
They're, they're not mixing up and varying the setup too often here. Updraft here. We saw Cryo go for this. Didn't find anything, and there again, it doesn't find anything. Bang just ducks away. Cryo taking a lot of space down B-Long. They called Smoke. He can challenge for sure if he wants. He has to challenge, honestly. This A main hit is maybe coming faster than we expect. Yeah. Nightfall in. Kang Kang is going through. He's got the blades. He's got a Vandal, too. Oh, he's spammable here. The Spike still hasn't made it out onto the site. It's still HP. by A main. I mean, there's so much attention drawn towards Kong Kong, but the Spike still isn't there. Not oh, a pivot being called. The pit invested onto Art. That's pressuring Stella right now, but there's the Spike. They're not getting it on site. Oh, the dart. Kong has got a break. He's tagged. He's gone. And the spike is still out of reach. The problem is they have, well, I thought they had enough room to work with around the pit to get the spike back, but no, there's just enough of a gap for Smoggy to fall. And finally, it seems like a decent hold from 100 Thieves. Better than decent. Flawless. As 100 Thieves get to eight. There's just no follow-up there from anybody from EDG to get with Kong Kong. So he is completely, I mean, he gets tracked by the drone too. I think a lot of things go wrong for Kong Kong as well to get the space. There they are. Just swag. Spike spotted. Eric and Bang with a really good reclear and holding of that left side. I would have liked to see more players flood into that pit and try to take the fight to Stellar. And then you still have time to pivot. So we'll go for EDG's first time out of the game here of the map. After one round win from 100 Thieves. <laughs> and when you're put in this situation, right, when you're so close to, to, I mean, quite frankly, before this series, what everyone would have said was an, an upset of this caliber. Yeah, you call a timeout after one round win. You make sure you've got everything figured out. Oh, yeah. And again, they have two, right? This is only yep. their first, so yep. they don't even have to worry about what 100 Thieves had to do. The problem here is, that's what's talk, talking about it. Big success from 100 Thieves out of the timeouts, especially on the first map of Icebox. No matter the coach change or anything, they've just given the opportunity for 100 Thieves to talk about it. And, and I would like to see a setup switch from 100 Thieves. I would like to see Cryo go somewhere else other than B-Long. Maybe get a pick through double doors. Maybe get up A main. Something like that. Well, I have but bad news. This might be the first time they actually challenge in B-Long. Kong Kong's got the op, head to head is possible. Here's a stun as well from Asuna to give Cryo some space. It's exactly what it does, and he takes that space. The dark two, everybody's rotating off. Now, I don't think they knew that Cryo took the space in the previous round. They had rotated off before he got here. Shot goes just a bit wide. He backs right on up. Yeah. He goes way deep. And here's the problem here. Now he's behind the Viper wall. So if they do choose to pivot back towards him, it could get dangerous. And also with that Viper wall potentially being cycled at this time, no, they're using the orb instead in mid. That but could deny information from them down B-Long yeah. and force a rotate. Derek's just droning it out right now. That puts Cryo back on the angle, but Austin is really unsure about what to do right now. And also worth noting that Derek's not gonna have that drone for the rest of the round. Such an important part such an important piece of utility. Oh, found a gap. Kong Kong saves life for now. They've got the Oh, the stun. Fury. That was so close to working on the Kong Kong, but he dashes away. Dang. He's actually gotten space in the sewers right now. They're hitting the A site still, though. Bang left alone. Asuna still has flashes for him. There's also an ult from Stellar. Util dump from Asuna. Nobody having to reposition. Spike still in hand. 20 seconds left. Ob shot not landing from Kong Kong. Takes a slight step back. It's gonna be straight up 5v5 for the site. With 13 seconds left, it's gonna be chaos while Stellar has his ult to work with. The spam's through the wall. Kong Kong's down. Nobody is as well. Slow it down now, Hunted Thieves. You've got Cryo in a great spot here. And it doesn't seem like it's gonna pan out. It's not gonna matter. Cryo isn't even gonna have a shot to do it because Hunter Thieves have pulled them back on their own. There it is. Out of the timeout again. Hunter Thieves are the one who reaps the benefits and they've actually put EDG in a space for it. Their economy is not the greatest. And it's flawless too, Prime Gaming. Huge 
huge round from Derek. Also credit to Stella for staying alive inside of sewers when Kong Kong was pressuring him. Yep. Cheers from 100 Thieves in their watch party back home. And for good reason too, because it honestly, it seemed like 100 Thieves were in trouble. But these last two rounds have been so big. You mentioned the economy for EDG, it's not great. Cryo still has the op. Still playing down B-Long though. They haven't looked nearly as dangerous on these types of rounds, on this half. With that orb actually, I think they can creep into scores. They'll break the alarm bot anyways. And finally leaning towards B. I think this is where they've gotten the most success here for EDG. They've been really relying heavily on A in the past couple of rounds, and that's been costing them. But look at this setup. Cryo here, Stellar here. It's interesting is it seemed like the spike was going towards A, and you still got nobody take trying to take some of that space A main, Ooh. perhaps trying to draw a rotation. They might have baited them in close. It doesn't matter, though. Stellar gets the both of them. Huge kills out from Stellar. The third there, too. And that wall timing coming down was because Stellar killed the Viper. And it caught Howdon completely unaware as well. They've re-cleared Long B with a dart. And they've got contr full control. Nobody moments before that sequence happened was flashing out of the smoke against Bang. So they know his position as well in the last 20 seconds. 30 seconds left. They're going to try to at least get the spike down on A. Try to get some credits here, but yeah, this round looks pretty secured. Again, you see the utility usage. Smoggy's able to take care of Bang, though. But there's still so many things they're going to have to deal with. Not even really able to get Spike Plant money as we're tied at 10. Just a ridiculous series. First half, I thought for sure EDG was going to batter 100 Thieves on this map. And then the beginning of this half, too, it looked for sure. Yep. These teams are so even. Within four rounds of the first two maps, both times, and now at least within three. But I I mean, we could see overtime for sure. Oh, at this rate, absolutely. Note, Smoggy has his ult, as does Bang. Cryo this time in a very different position. We've talked so much about him not getting a ton of value down B-Long and how it seems like EDG seemed to favor the middle of the map. Here he's holding down double doors. It's not easy to get that flank off, but Cryo is definitely somebody who I've seen find success with that. They use the wall to pressure towards A, but they're actually running into Cryo right Cryo now in sewers. Cryo knows, Cryo knows, but he's surrounded. He gets away though. Yeah, he's got help from Stellar too. Great opener. Oh, EDG right now looking completely scattered. Howdong looking to find something to do. He could flank Stella. This turret is really deep. Just trying to catch this cross on the screens. Yeah, the hit's going to end up A. Hey? 100 Thieves have a couple members here as well. It's the same approach as last round. One person trying to sell a fake. Yep. Or at least draw rotate something, anything. With the amount yeah. of noise here, they are drawing rotates, but there's barely anything happening on the site, and Stellar cleans it up, too. It's working. They hear the plant. Between the plant going down, Haddon falling, yeah, they've understood that it was all a ruse. Nice timing out from Bang. It's a swing, get the kill on Chichu, a 5v2 here. Yeah, and the spike was planted, but again, it's just so difficult for them to get back into this thing, but nobody oh. trying to push oh. the pace. Smoggy gets another. 2v2. How have they gotten it back to this? How have they gotten it back to this? Nobody with three! It looked so safe, it looked so secure! But EDG snatched the lead right back! That's a... That's what is that, a 2v5? Yes! Oh my goodness, that is... backbreaking. Economy's still good for 100 Thieves. But Edward Gaming on the verge of going up to match point right now. And looks like they want to challenge Cryo fast this time. There's no stun for him to take this space. Cryo's alone in B-Long. And he's taking a real aggressive angle, too. He's by himself. He can't dash, he can't dash! Nope. So he's just praying, praying that he doesn't get spotted. And yeah, he's able to get one. How much more can he find? No, nothing. That res should be pretty easy to come back up as well. 
the flank as well. That alarm bot is down. Stellar's watching it, but he loses the fight. Chi Chu wins it out. And now they have to figure out how do they deal with this pressure. The Cosmic Divide invested. Smoke to get out. I don't think they want to commit to this right now with this Cosmic Divide up. And they still have so much time, Bola. There's a minute on the clock. And they can really, I mean, they can flip the map. They can fully rotate. And the thing is, because of the Cosmic Divide, they have no idea. They don't know if they hear rotations coming off. They don't really hear much of anything. And even if they did, the control is in favor of EDG right now. Yeah. Look at Choo Choo's position. He's up top mid. He's just spotted a main. There's no flank coming. Oh, the timing. Oh, my goodness, oh the timing. Asuna oh. clearing everything. A couple shots in the back of the head, and Chi Chu falls. And that's the wall down. They can't use that to execute anymore. They have to plant safe. They won't be able to play a B long. Aftershock used. Asuna flashing to try to take some space back because you see their positioning. It's not like 100 Thieves have much to work with. Drone they coming right now. And with 25 seconds left, they all pivot. of a sudden, the conversation changes. Yeah, they can't go back A, but they're going to try. It's a foot race. There's a turret. Oh, Stellar's dead. They can get all the way through him in 14 seconds. I'm not even sure they have time right now. They very well may not. It's a sprint all the way there. Six seconds. What? What? Forget oh, about the time. Me? That was the Hail Mary. That shouldn't have worked. And that gets EDG to series point. Run that back. How did that just happen? I mean, is, I think 100 Thieves thinking, OK. Right, there's only 20 seconds left. What are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? Let's let's uh, let's in investigate. And Kaka just kills them all. Oh my gosh. I don't even know if they had the plant too, by the way. So no, he I don't think so. He might have had to do that. Just ridiculous. Potentially the last round of the series. The Rolling Thunder invested the gravity but well there oh. as well. He's stuck, but the C's and the gravity well in response keeps him back. That's a lot of utility invested right yes, there and is. for no value. Just a reset. Now, Seller has his lockdown, so not, uh, I mean, they haven't thrown everything at this. China, one round away from taking their first international series win and only participating in their second. Not a bad, not a bad ratio, not a bad record. But they still have to close it out. Got Smoggy, who's now going to have his nightfall in line. Once again, spread thin. Big fight here. Chi Chu holding the angle. Asuna gets punished. He got a little greedy. He got a little curious. And it cost him his life. And the interesting part, the key to the A-holds for 100 Thieves was Asuna throwing that aftershock, delaying a lot for Bang and Cryo to work their magic on the site. Seller has ult right now. I would love to see a preemptive ult pop. Asking ye shall receive the lockdown used. And with 23 seconds left, I don't know that they're going to be able to do much to clear it out. They have to give some of this space back. They're going to commit. He's committing in this. They're going to commit. I mean, he gets the plant. There's still three people who can protect him. He's not going to go down. Kang Kang on the flank, too. Oh, no. A game winning play. Is this how it ends? Two times in a row. Is this where the hope of 100 Thieves fall? Con Con again. Derek has been looking at this. I mean, they just have to wait. Wait, this is not planted very good for them. This is not planted very good. Bang with two massive kills. He's got a Stellar's gotten it to half. He's gotten it three quarters of the way. He's going to take it all the way. 100 Thieves are not done yet. Oh, my goodness. The Kai Kai is actually putting so much work in to damage the economy right now. But they still have so much money. They still have so much. Last round of regulation. And there's the final timeout for EDG2 called. Look at this. Hong Kong is really trying to speed it up right now to get up there close. They try to plant for long. Slightly misplaced, but also not many tools. Remember, that lockdown was going down. They had to commit to it. With 20 seconds left, I think it was probably the right play, especially with the Viper down. So much to talk about in this halftime. Not in the halftime, in the timeout. And just a minute to cover it all. Chi Chu's got the, I mean, in terms of ults, it's kind of simplistic. Chi Chu's got his. Derek is one away. And that's basically all that's gonna, outside of Kang Kang's knives as well. You cannot let Edward Gaming get on a site here.
you can absolutely not let it happen. So all eyes to me look to cry on that B-Long angle. For the first time, I'm going to say he must go to B-Long. And he's not. It looks like he's headed A. Well, for Edward as well, the decision is not clear, right? Right, yeah. Because Cryo has been playing B-Long. But my idea here would be to push down B-Long, get that ult down, and all of a sudden it's a really, really tough spot to retake, especially because Stellar just used his KJ ult. And we've got a tech pause. <laughs> Keep it in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> what a game, what a series. I mean, the, the, the tech pause, the tech pause feels bad. <laughs> just a little tease, no? I mean, but the players just having to sit in silence. Yes, on the side of a timeout, but just having to wait this one through. They're making a sweat. Let's get back into this final round of regulation EDG. One round away for doing it. Moving on to the single elim elimination bracket. It's been do or die for them for two maps. Do they go fast? Do they go aggressive? Look at this ball. There's no split. There's no spreading things out. This stun makes it look like they're going for that A main control, so there might be caution here from Edward Gaming. I don't think they've made a hit like this. This looks very concerning. The wall goes up. The Prowler to take some space. Remember, Derek's the only one there. You called for Cryo. You called for the op, and he delivers early on. Derek spamming through, deals a little bit of damage. Austin with two massive kills, oh. but G2 gets it back. The pitch down. It's a 3v2. Spike not playing it yet. Plenty of time. No Chichu. mollies, nothing to keep this plant from going down. Derek's Hunter's Fury not at play as he's dead. Smoggy weak. EDG They're looking to deal a devastating death blow to 100 Thieves. One round to decide it. It's almost all on the IGL right now. Oh! No way! He's gonna get both! He's gonna get both and he dies! Overtime on the books! 100 Thieves keep it alive. Cryo with that first kill. And it only took one. Falling right back into it. And still the danger was there. Still the danger was there in the pit. It was Chichu. Has been instrumental, especially on that defensive half. In that 2K, the spam from Stellar too. She has a sixth sense for it. I, I mean, I'm surprised to see Edward Gaming go back towards that pit, which they lost the round on last time as well. But they did go towards the audible call to push up through the pit, which I like very much. Now we switch sides every single round, win by two. Determine the winner. And it's been neck and neck all series. And even more so on Pearl. 100 Thieves now on attack to open up this overtime bout. And it looks like they're going to try to take some face A, the dash across from Cryo, and that should at least give enough sound confirmation. Oh, they're going to re clear right now. Yes, they are. They've got some utility to deal with. I'm going to give it up after that. Not finding anything from Kong Kong. No, a little damage dealt onto Cryo. Yeah, that's it, really. Didn't even get the drone out from Derek either. Definitely working to try to get a pick there. Looking now, Chichu's got the orb on the back hall on the wall. His setups have been phenomenal. His anchoring has been sensational. Well, updraft for Cryo here. Yep. Top of screens, they can go through with this dart as well. The thing is, as long as they delay here, it's just buying time for EDG to rotate over. They've made their way over now. The spike goes down, and they assume their post point position. It's no cryo. He's still playing backside. Looking for a flash here from Asuna. But that orb is causing so much problems. And yes, it is. They actually know cryo's position. He's literally 1 HP in the orb right now. He stays alive, though. He's got to play in it. He's got to play in it, and Chichi spams him through. This wall's going to come back up. They've got to wait for a little bit of fuel, and then they can go for it. The orb is there, too. Derek with one shock dart. Playing down long alongside Stellar. Smoggy's fallen. Chichu weak as Derek finds another. The spam's through as they're getting the kills they need. But how long is he going to get no, the defuse? No. He's going to get the defuse and get stopped just in the nick of time. They spam him down. They clean him up. And they take the lead. And that's a crucial round to win immediately. Stopping the defense, which had such success.
for Edward Gaming and Regulation. And it could all come down to this. I know we said both teams use their final timeouts, but when we go to overtime, they each get one more. Edward not taking any chances. Need to discuss. The interesting thing here, Ball, is we haven't really seen EDG on the back foot this map up until now. Now it's 100 Thieves who can put them away. One round away from, from taking care of them, from advancing. And again, I gotta hearken to the beginning of the opening half because this was this <laughs> did not look like a likely outcome. No. No, it did not. Not at all. Edward has been favoring the A side quite a bit, and it's been having mixed success. See the coaches, Mike, and coach after for EDG, discussing strategy with their teams right now. Potentially the last round right now, 100 Thieves putting down. And it's Cryo with a glass cannon. Probably the most heavily talked about part of this entire map. Oh, for sure. And for good reason, man. This guy is quite possibly one of the biggest upgrades that has been made for any of these partnership teams coming into this year. Oh, a thousand percent. And they put the ball in his hands. And they were also so close to being a top tier team at Champions. He's taking they did fall out in groups. He's taking space, playing around the recall smoke. Space acquired. They're rotating so fast. I mean, they barely even had any presence towards B at the beginning of the round either. Just starting for Cryo, getting him up there, and it looks like they might be heading towards him. They're rotating up through window after so much mid control. He's alone. Alone, but in such a good spot. This angle, difficult to deal with. It's not like they have many drones. They have prowlers, and that's it. Yeah, and the, the oh, knife from nobody he, just came back up. He doesn't have any prowlers. He just got suppressed. He gave up the angle as well. Thought the timing, especially with all the pressure the Haldong's been pushing towards B, but this is the same look. It's the exact same look. Show one person over here. I like this for 100 Thieves. They're trying to collapse oh. on him, but he still gets the kill anyways. Oh, is he going to get go down too. It's traded back one for one. Cryo still with the op. The Cloud Bracer, the dash across. Waits patiently as Stellar gets another one. Con Con has fallen. The op shot goes wide. Numbers in favor of 100 Thieves. For now, Smoggy with the plant, and it's unconventional. The stun, two players stunned up. Cryo's trying to go forward, but the Molly keeps him back. What a shot up from Cryo. He delivers. Stellar does as well, but Smoggy trading it back. A 1v3 for tournament life. Again, the heroics have been so good, and they're not going to deliver this time around. 100 Thieves avoid disaster. They take down EDG and they move on. So close. A lot closer than anybody expected. And I don't think 100 Thieves underestimated these guys, but the world might have. EDG looked electric. And while no, everything was not perfect for 100 Thieves, they still showed such good form and composure and EDG have to walk with their heads held high after winning the first map here or the second map excuse me still great success for them they take about dude what a performance out from EDG again we say goodbye to them as they take a bow like you said, but I, they, I wasn't, I'll admit, I wasn't a believer after champs. <laughs> I'm a believer now. Yeah, me, me neither. Wasn't a firm believer. But this region, from what we saw from both EDG and FPX, and now with their introduction to Masters as well that we revealed earlier today, definitely looking good. But 100 Thieves, maybe the shakier start than people would have expected. Yeah. But they're still moving on. And they still, I think, look good enough to be considered at least favorites to move up to face whoever comes out of the other side of their bracket. Yeah, sure, it's a top four.
and that, again, you know, we've talked so much about the nature of this tournament and the format. And the thing is, when you're in a when you're in a format like this, it doesn't have to be pretty, no. right? Like the win is all that matters, and, and win by a, a mile or, or win by yeah. just an inch, it's it's a win. I love that, especially what we saw in the alpha bracket too. Yeah, and and given the format, Remaining. I mean. You don't have any information on these teams. You've never watched them in their current iteration, in their current form, with their level of practice. So, scrappy or not, and talk about the teams that made it out of the the alpha bracket too. Like, I had a scrappy first game. DRX had a scrappy first game, and hey, they're in top four. And, and you know, very quickly, for as much as it looked like hundred thieves were in trouble, I've got to call out. The, the composure that they showed, the fact that they believed in Cryo, right? And yeah, he was playing well, he was putting up numbers, but to put the op in his hands with no armor to close out the overtime round, yeah. that's full belief in your star, and boy, did that pay off. Yeah, and speaking of that, no armor, maybe that's why he falls back. I mean, yeah, that's huge. Yeah. And it's easy to believe in Cryo, to be honest. So, yeah, huge. MVP vote up on your screen right now. You've got plenty of good options. Uh, I don't know who you go for. To be honest, I this think is the first time a coach has been on the MVP vote. Like, <laughs> oh, I think the last time we had hundred thieves actually, it was Mike Sean. and Sean were up there. Oh, that's so, so good. Mike might be the only one who's ever been up there <laughs> consistently. <laughs> Either way, you have plenty of good options. Get your votes, cast them in. Hundred thieves, outrageous composure to make the comeback, pull off, and survive to the second round of the tournament. This is so freaking good. And this has only been round one of the Omega Bracket. We're gonna throw it to a break, catch our breaths. We'll be right back.
are China's last representative in this tournament, but it does feel like they're going up against the final boss in round one. If they lose, they are out. Again, you have to keep an eye on the pressure coming in from the flank. Bang's able to get a cheat shoot. Can he find anything else? The pressure has to be applied now. Nobody falls. Now Cryo pushing forward. They've got him pinched. They've got him stymied. They've got him suffocated. And they've got him done. It the does not go no, their not way. The deep not again. again. Asuna does it again. That's the second time the Red Bull Clutch comes through. The Stinger out from Stellar that gets 100 Thieves. The Icebox win. Edward Gaming with definitely some bite to them, though. Uh, uh, what's going on right here? Now you've got the Neural Theft, Asuna playing side. around it. Chichu still has oh. to be clear. Chichu's gotten two. Chichu gets three. How does he get away with it? Unreal round from Chichu. No, I just can't kill these guys. They're just too good. He's got to jump to Oh, the spam through. He stopped him. It's all on to Chichu. Can he hold him back? Yes, he can. EDG, take Lotus and send us to Pearl. I mean, they just, they can play this so beautifully. EDG can, they have the weapons, they play off distance, and there's just not a whole lot they can do. It's just so difficult for them to get back into the scene, but nobody trying to push the pace. Smoggy gets another. How have they gotten it back to this? Nobody with three. It's almost all on the IGL right now. No way. He's gonna get both, he's gonna get both, and he does. Nice boys. 100 Thieves avoid disaster. They take down EDG and they move on. Welcome back, everyone. That was the Prime Gaming post match highlights. I am back with Bren, Psycho, and SciShow once again. How are you guys doing? You okay? You good? <laughs> no, I'm not yeah? okay. You good? I'm not okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was just an unbelievable series, just from beginning to end, I think, as well. I mean, we were talking about the parallels of like Edward Gaming, a team that. You know, the, these guys have got that experience from playing at Champs. They bring it over here and they go to toe to toe to toe with, you know, one of the teams that we were talking about as one of the potential favorites. I mean, they almost had that. They did. It was right in their fingertips and it just slipped away barely. I mean, they look so phenomenal this map, all series, in fact. I mean, shutting down Asuna, shutting down Cryo early on, but, you know, they just let it slip away. 100 Thieves managed to mount that comeback and bring it home. There were some absurd rounds. I thought EDG were winning it when they were up like uh, 7x at the beginning of the half. I thought they'd won it in round 21 when they pulled off the 2v5. The overtime was crazy back and forth as well. Yeah. And what was this from Stella? Just absurd, isn't it? Just absurd. I mean, Spamman had angle with the Vandal as well, straight into that. God, Almost as if the, he knew. The bang reflank in the post plant too. That won that round for sure. Oh, these secured. guys just pulled everything out of the bag. And Doug used the word that I think is so apt, composure. Because I think the 100 Thieves looked rattled about halfway through this game. I think it was like round 16, maybe round 15, something like that. They looked like they just completely yeah. lost the plot. Yeah. And then uh, the later it got, some stabilizing factor came through and they ended up having it. Yeah, I mean, I, the round that sticks out of my head was them winning that post plant situation where they were retaking on B and Kang Kang's Rotation was just a little bit delayed. Just a little bit late with that one round yeah. that was the turning point. But yeah, I mean, hats off as well for Edward Gamer, I think. These guys were just... <laughs> Did you say Edward Gamer? Edward Gamer. <laughs> Edward Gamer. Listen, Edward, Edward Gamer, Gamers. Edward Gaming, I don't Jimmy know how they would be referred. <laughs> However Edward would like to be referred to, I'll call Edward yeah. anything. I'll call him Daddy if he wants. Oh my goodness, listen, bro. They, it's they getting put, late. They put it, it's they, getting they, late. They, they really did test 100 Thieves, a team that we are coming into this saying is, you know, we've got such high expectations for. I think they could walk away from this as well. Not only proud, but they've walked away with this with even more experience and looking scary heading into the 2023 season. Let's talk about that. After, before we saw 100 Thieves, you guys all said they're definitely one of the favorites. Do you stand by that after seeing what happened here? I, I would say that EDG played up to 100 Thieves, just from what, what I saw. But I think there's a, a bit of nuance to that because 100 Thieves had some gaps in their gameplay. I think everyone was expecting Cryo to just be plug and play, instant improvement. And I don't think that's exactly what we saw. That, that integration still has a bit of a way to go, but I don't think they're far off from playing like tournament favorites. I definitely agree. I think that if they want to close that gap and become the tournament favorites that everybody has expected them to be, they need to do a better job of setting up Cryo to get those early picks, to be the star player that he truly is. Yeah. We did not see that from them today.
Well, before the break, we asked you guys to vote for the player of the match. The votes are in, and you guys at home have chosen Stella. Uh, what a series he's had as so well. Worthy. But like, I'm, I'm a little bit sad about Chi Chu. I feel yeah. like he should have yeah. snuck himself into <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, just into yeah. the MVP for, yeah, ma for yeah, the match yeah. three. Uh, I mean, this is well deserved, though, for Stella, because yeah. there are few tests, I think, in your career as a young IGL player where you're really going to be tried in this kind of manner, where Edward Gaming was setting the pace. The tempo was at their level with the chaos. They're a quirky team to play against, they I think. Are. They are not like your usual opponents and that is a hell of a test for Stella to try and yeah. overcome but I think he, he proved more than up to the task in many many moments yeah Stella this whole offseason has been a wild his fragging has been out of control totally different player so that might well continue as the tournament goes on well for more on this uh, match let's send it over to Doug who is standing by with Cryo right now for the Verizon post-match interview thank you so much to Cryo I, my heart is still going crazy. I saw Mike's and James right after, and there was all smiles, and Mike's even showed emotion. But you are like cold and flatline. How do you, in the face of all of these expectations of this team, all these expectations of you individually, how do you maintain composure through a series like that? Uh, I guess it's not really shown on the outside, but my heart rate is like, was pumping <laughs> up towards the end over there. But uh, yeah, I just try to like control as many factors that I can to like help my gameplay. Like I don't, I try not to get too emotional because that like could make it like peak your performance. So oh, sure, yeah. yeah. Um, talk to me about expectations in general. Everyone is talking about 100 Thieves. The upgrade again with you specifically, people are talking about you guys for top four, perhaps top two, even a lock in to win lock in. I didn't do that on purpose. Um, what do you say to the expectations? Are they are they fair? Uh, I mean, our team, we kind of treat all of our opponents the same. I mean, we're just going to take it one game at a time, like EDG, like they're a really good opponent. Like, even if we had an off day and they had a good day, this match could have been like completely different. So we just kind of treat everybody the same. And I have two last questions for you, and they're very similar. So first off, I'd like to know, given what you just went through against EDG, sir, I mean, defying expectations, really, what would you say that you learned about your team after a series like that? Uh, I'd say that EDG exposed um, our kind of weakness on splitting up towards like a late, sorry, late uh, mid rounds. Um, they kind of just like picked us off one by one. They kind of like double swung us when we were getting caught out. So we just kind of have to work on that. And we lost a lot of like key rounds in the beginning of the third map. So uh, yeah. And then the last question I have for you, again, very similar, given everything that you just went through, given the fact that the team continued to put the ball in your hands, get you the glass cannon op and OT to secure the series, what would you say you learned about yourself during that series? Uh, I'd say I'd probably have to work more on my reads, uh, especially like mid game, uh, try to like, just try to read where they're going and try to like avoid their utility best I can. It was an outrageous performance. You popped off, especially when the team needed you most. Congratulations on the win. We're going to throw it back to the desk and see you take it away. Thank you very much, Doug. He looks so calm, so yes. like relaxed. You know, he didn't just go through what he had to go through there yeah. on stage. He's more calm than the four of us. But also like <laughs> a little bit reserved, right? Like yeah. talking a lot about their weaknesses and things that they did wrong rather than things that they did well. So I think 100 Thieves will come back from this match with a lot to improve on looking forwards. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more with that one. I mean, that was a very much like a self-reflective interview that Doug was yeah, conducting. Yeah, that was a therapy That session. was like, oh, so what can we tell? You know, can you tell me about your weaknesses a little <laughs> bit more? Like, they were going deep on that. But listen, I mean, the guy was, he was uh, he was saying what they thought they did wrong immediately, which I think is a sign of, you know, you're a competitor that's looking to improve with every single match. I mean, yeah. uh, that's almost everybody here. But yeah, I think uh, good signs ahead should be at least for 100 Thieves that they're going to be able to improve upon their mistakes. I sure. feel like we all, we all learned something about ourselves <laughs> from that series. It wasn't just cryo. Um, uh, but I'm not sure if you guys remember <laughs> that, but there were two other games that happened today. Uh, this is the HyperX Reflex moment of the day and cast your mind all the way back to the first match. And this was a banger as well between Team Vitality and Global Esports and the Sideshow. What a moment this was. <laughs> yeah, Twiston just getting set up for so many multi-kills. The collapse happening over and over again. I think Twiston was just having a field day. Yeah, I mean, this guy was just a demon, wasn't he? I mean. I keep hitting the same point as well, but he was saying in that one little segment, he's like, we don't have any star players, by the way, on Vitality. But I mean, honestly, by the end of this event, depending on the trajectory that Vitality go, we might be calling some of these players star players. You know, players like Twiston just pulling off magic moments like that. Multi as well, just performing unreal scenes across the board. But yeah, that was, uh, 
That was that was quite a special series. I enjoyed that one. We yeah. still have EMEA teams. Thank God yeah. for that. Thank God for that. <laughs> for now, right? So I go for, for now. now. Yeah. For now. We'll see how it happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's have a, have a look at the bracket because your team is going to be taking the stage tomorrow. Uh, right. Anything that you want to share to get us a little bit excited for that matchup? Oh, don't miss this match. This is just going to okay. be an absolute banger. One way or another, somebody's going home and their name's going to be Fnatic. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> you tell them. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Saisho? Well, I mean, considering that Sentinels Fnatic was supposed to be, uh, on paper, the best game of that opening round, and we just saw 100 Thieves EDG hit this height. If Sentinels Fnatic is any better than that, I'm going to have palpitations for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was a banger match. Brent's yeah. just going to pass out. No, yeah. I might actually yeah. just pass out, honestly, either from just exhaustion and working these three <laughs> match days or from the match and itself, I don't know. I'm just happy to yeah. be here to witness everything yeah. that is happening. I mean, happening. that match was a treat. So yeah, it really yeah. was. Uh, yeah. But I'm going gonna, gonna to close this out so you guys can go get some rest because you guys are both, all three of you are going to be involved in that match tomorrow. So yeah. that's going to be very, yeah, very I'm fun. playing for Sentinels. Yeah. <laughs> you ready? We've been yeah. working hard. No I'm way, ready. Fnatic I'm really proud of you. Then. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for giving EMEA the free win, Brent. But yeah, have a good night sleep everybody make sure you come back tomorrow for Fnatic versus Sentinels and T1 versus Furia good night and we'll see you then will it be V for victory or GE fighting two unknown commodities taking the stage unsure of what we're gonna get here today could very well be an absolute giga banger <laughs> you know especially with these two teams that are really just looking to try new things and grow here in Sao Paulo trying to contest this one in the 1v1 but Aaron he has to stick it the percentage play he needs to try and get half and it sets up Twisted for the easy slam dunk win V split a heavy take into B heaven center scattered out cross through the choke point but no one is dealing with this guy. Vitality, they clean it up. Another day in the office for this team. So about Vitality, that dark horse aura that's just been surrounding them. Looks like people weren't joking. Swinging through, no, and that spacing just not good enough. The collateral in play, and one after the other. They're trying to take the fight, but they will all fall. Twiston. And a whole lot of utility just jumped through. Take Shido. What an answer once more. The Blade Storm. That's what we've been missing. That is what we've been missing. Spike dropped down. Now the re-swing. Reset in the aim. One after another. SK Rossi. This country represented India. Taking them all the way now to map number three in this series. And it has to be heroics. It has to be now. One after the other. The double swing. Not spacing themselves out. And it is just crumbling before them. The same errors we were talking about in map number Number one just rearing their heads there. Attacking in. Sees into the back, double swings there. It's beautiful. And the Seas catches on to two, just lined up. Vitality. You are so sexy, guys. Oh my god. Vitality safe hands for them. 13 6 is the scoreline. They have sent Global Esports home. Two brand new comps on the brand new map. We're gonna get to see both these teams' answers. This is gonna be exciting. Oh boy, I love it, and I hope you guys are all strapped in for a wild ride. Spam comes in, they're looking to try and offset the timing here, playing back in ahead of this. Spike still all down, the perfect flash. Great work from Cracks. V2, so much pressure. Give them that gateway, that sliver of Hobie. The first for the old to the back. Kiwi keeps footballers <laughs> heading for success. Oh, no, 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 this is insane. I thought Moshe would lie down or something. He's a mile away over to a day. A ball is putting up numbers. Unbelievable round to close it down on. I am mind blown by footballists right now. Kiwi at the end of that game said, unlimited power. <laughs> right, getting ready to come down. Multiple people spotted him and puts it into his own hands, though. Moshe, a 1v3. Oh. Not gonna happen. Oh. RRQ Woo! back in control. Hey. He's got one, a he needs a second, and he needs it now. He needed it. 30 seconds to go at this point. Oh, Lost a... and confused. The first one in, really willing to challenge, but footballers, they have him back towards long. They're brawling out, the nade's going to find two. It's a 1v1! Mosh closes the account, and RRQ are left brokenhearted. EDG are China's last representative in this tournament, but it does feel like they're going up against the final boss in round one. If they lose, they are out. Again, you have to keep an eye on the pressure coming in from the flank. Bang's able to get in Chichu. Can he find anything else? The pressure has to be applied now. Nobody falls. Now Cryo pushing forward. They've got him pinched. They've got him stymied. They've got him suffocated. And they've got him done. It does not again. go no, their way. The not again. again. Asuna does it again. That's the second time. Through the stinger out from Stellar that gets 100 Thieves, the Icebox win. 
Edward Gaming with definitely some bite to them, though. Uh, uh, what's going on right here? Now you've got the neural fact Austin awesome playing side. around it. Chichu still hasn't been cleared. Chichu's gotten two. Chichu gets three. Bike down. How does he get away with this? Plasma. That's unreal round from Chichu. No, I just can't kill these guys. They're just too good. He's got right, a jump he's got all the spam through. He stopped him. It's all on to Chichu. Can he hold the pack? Yes, he can. Yes, nice, nice, uh. EDG take Lotus and send us to Pearl. I mean, they just they can play this so beautifully. EDG. And they have the weapons, they play off distance, and there's just not a whole lot they can do. It's just so difficult for them to get back into the thing, but nobody oh. trying to push oh. the pace. Smoggy gets another. Baby. How have they gotten it back to this? Nobody with three. It's almost all on the IGL right now. Oh. No way. He's going to get both. He's going to get both, and he does. Nice, boys. 100 Thieves avoid disaster. They take.